People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck, reporting live from Bangkok. So, people, I wanted to give you guys a nice little message uh, yesterday, but I didn't have the opportunity just because I had to go, I went running like at about 6 a.m., and I had to hurry up and work for a company, and yesterday was just a very chaotic day that led to a story that I'm going to tell you right now. Now, I'm going to tell you a paradigm, right? Essentially, this is what Bob Proctor says, that it is an essential, let's just say, grouping of habits, okay? It's kind of like what we do on autopilot every morning. We wake up, we we turn on the news like the majority of the world. They look at how bad the news is. Uh, They look at messages on their phone. This is a set of habits. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the most destructive paradigms, or I guess you could say one of the most destructive habits out there, is not taking the leap of faith. Now, I remember I mentioned this uh, in one of Jack Canfield's principles, and this was in this is actually in regards to what I'm going to say probably potential students that uh, they I was supposed to be teaching. Now, here in Thailand, let's just say that the majority of Thai people, they don't have it in their hearts to learn English, and although English is the gateway to prosperity for them. Um, if you know just Thai, if you know just the Thai language, regardless of, regardless of all the corruption money, regardless of all the corruption, you know, corrupted businesses out here and whatnot, that whereas, you know, there are Thai people who don't speak English, but they make billions of baht doing, you know, I guess you could say illegal stuff. But regardless of that, people do not want to learn English and they don't have it in their hearts. So you can't push them to actually learn English. Example. There's been plenty of people I have taught in the south of Thailand, and uh, basically they would learn English for probably, let's just say, a week or two weeks, and then they would stop. They don't have it in their hearts to learn anymore. See, that's why it's good to start teaching English before the ages of 18, uh, and not to people over the ages of 23 through like 40, I guess you could say, uh, outside. I'm not talking about out of business, but I'm talking about outside, because... The majority of the people just do not have it in their hearts to commit. The commitment. It all comes down to commitment. You know what? It's so sad because they they don't understand the grand opportunity in actually learning and bettering their lives. Just like every day. It's like, okay, you wake up in the morning. By the end of the day, how did you make yourself better that particular day? How did you make yourself better? And if you cannot say one thing or even go over the successes... That you had that day, you just wasted an entire 20, well, I guess you could say 12 hours of your day going into the next day. See what I mean? It's really, and it's destructive habits. It's crazy because let's just say if you have a particular student, or I guess you could say students, and they said, okay, we're going to learn at this time. And they literally didn't message the main person, and they literally just disappeared without saying a thing. And then they say, hey, uh, we'll start some other time. That, uh, that, that some other time is exactly what Bob Proctor is talking about as far as paradigms. That other time, there is no other time. There is no, oh, we'll start next month. No, 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 no. There is no, we'll get started. No, you need to just jump in and get started at that particular moment. If you want to write a book right now, get started right now. Open up that Microsoft Word or whatever I guess you could say interface that you have and start typing. Because if you say, oh, I'll get I'll get to it tomorrow, this is exactly what Bob Proctor was talking about. It's kind of like what he was saying when um, a lot of people who they're getting ready to go for that house or they're getting ready to go for that car. And they say, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to save my money. Uh, I don't need a car. My car's still good right now. Uh, I don't need a new job. Um, I'm just going to stay here and be miserable at the place I'm at right now. It's crazy, man. Back in... Uh, College of Southern Nevada, I don't speak to anyone there anymore, Uh, but I used to work with dental assistants, front office and back office, and they were some of the most miserable people on the planet. And I used to say, okay, so what exactly are you going to do with your life? You're in your 30s, and you've been working here, and all you do is pull charts and files and everything. What are you going to do? And it's crazy because she would literally get so pissed off and say, well, just because you did this, you know, doesn't mean you have to question me about my life. I'm like, no, I'm not questioning you. You need to question yourself. You see what I mean? Because I'm get, I'm not saying travel the world. I'm saying what are you doing with your life? 33% of your life is down the drain. What have you accomplished and what are you looking forward to? People don't have – they're just running through life blind. 
If you go through life a casual, you'll end up a casualty, like Les Brown has said. So if you don't take that leap of faith and say, you know what, I'm going to commit, I'm going to pay this money. See, that's why my uh, where I work right now, they say, hey, you need to pay up front all the money. Because once you pay that money, that's the commitment. You're not going to say, damn, I'm not going to let 3,000 US dollars go away. I'm not going to let 2,000 US dollars go away. I'm not going to let one. No, 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 no. You're committed. That means you're forced. You're forced to learn. And somewhere throughout that course, hopefully, a teacher is going to be able to show you that, yes, learning English is not only fun, but it is a promising future for you and for a lot of people out here in Thailand and all over the world. See, that's what I'm trying to reach out to. You know, I got a lot of people. I talk about a lot of motivational things like me talking about focusing on your core genius today. And at the end of the day, a lot of people just do not, they don't understand what's out there, what's available to them, what kind of literature is out there, what kind of websites and what kind of learning mechanisms that you could use to enhance the ability and your ability that you do not have right now in the skill that you don't have right now to uplift yourself. See, a lot of people just walk through life casual. I remember I was walking yesterday because university started again out here where I live. And these particular students from Rangsit University, when they see me, they would walk probably, they, they would take like two huge steps to either their right or their left. And they would walk around me while giving me a very, very dirty look. This is kind of how... This is what happens when, I'm just going to say, this is what happens when you don't know the English language. You know, you you go through life ignorant. Not even the English language, just not knowing about other cultures other than your own. Go to China. Holy Jesus. In China, I remember these three African guys who, they, they look African, but they're from Britain. They were literally walking around and probably about 50 Chinese people went up to them and started taking pictures like they were superstars. When you go through life ignorant, and not knowing who these particular people are, and not knowing who the Red Tails are, the Tuskegee Airmen, and not knowing who Malcolm X is, and not knowing who Martin Luther King is, and not knowing who Nelson Mandela is, and not knowing who the Great Debaters is, and not knowing who's uh, Rosa Parks, or uh, any of these unbelievable iconic figures, the Underground Railroad, all that stuff. If you go through life not knowing just the basic history, you are just pretty much ignorant of everything around you. You believe that all that revolves around the world is white for basically, let's just put it, you know, let's just put it, you know, I'm just calling it like I see it because I got one particular guy that lives in my condo when he walks out. Oh, my God. These women bow out to him and give him the biggest smile. But when I walk past them, they take two giant steps and give me a dirty look. You see what I mean? This is based on education. Everything is predicated around a thought that you are not going to be successful, I guess you could say, in my country if you are color. See, this is why I'm writing my book right now. And this is why I have the fire and the drive to complete this and to do this and to publish it and have some of the most greatest people on the planet read it and show them how I was able to get out of the abyss on my own. There's no family. I have no family. They haven't spoke to me in more than a year, okay? I don't have, I don't have immediate friends who would just... Say, hey, you know, stick to it. No, well, now I do, you know, a wonderful friend out there in Indonesia. But I don't have a friend that says, you know what, do this, do that. You're great. You're this. I don't have that. I don't have a family. I don't have a mother that's just, just going to say, hey, uh, stick through it. No, no, I don't have anyone. This is, I went into the abyss by myself. And all this is is more motivation because once I get my word out and my speech out, everything will change for me. Because everything needs to be said. Everything that I have lived through can inspire the masses and the masses of people around the world. So I'm not just going to say, hey, I don't want to learn this. I don't want to learn this. I'm just going to give up on this. And see, this is that that's the paradigm. See, I've been able to control my paradigm because if I didn't control it, I would have gone back to America a long time ago and lived that same miserable life that hundreds of millions of Americans are living right now. You see what I mean? So if you're going to... I guess you could say stick with it. Don't give up before you even start it. A lot of people give up before they even start. They say, you know what? I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. And uh, maybe I can learn English some other time. No, the time is now. AEC started. If you guys aren't aware of AEC, 
We're talking these, the people from Myanmar, the people from Singapore, Malaysia, everywhere are going to move to Thailand and take Thai people's jobs because why? Because they know more English than they do. You're gonna, when I go into a hospital, there's going to be a Singaporean girl working at the damn uh, front desk and there's going to be Thai women giving her a dirty look just because she knows more of, a, more of the language and gets a much, much higher salary than she does. Learn English. Don't give up too easily. Especially if, if, a, if a particular person says, hey, this guy is teaching at this company, this company, this company. He knows what he's doing. Not just some random fat old teacher that, you know, he's here on his pension plan. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you need to commit. You need to commit to learning whatever it is you want to learn and develop skills and develop the ability or you are going to end up a casualty just like the billions across the planet. So that's my speech, I guess you could say, for today. All right. Now, people, I told you, I'm hoping that it doesn't get too loud. Uh, I'm going to have to lower it just a little bit. Okay, all right. I think that's a little bit better. Yeah, that's probably better. All right, now, I do apologize if I hit that red mark. I'm seeing it right now on my microphone that I'm hitting that red mark pretty, pretty often. So uh, I apologize for that. But just lower the volume, and I think it'll be all right. So with that being said, people, what I'm going to do is talk about the new principle, building your success team, staying focused on your core genius. What Jack, what Jack Canfield said in this particular principle, he said, I believe you had inside you a core genius, someone thing that you love to do and do so well that you hardly feel like you're charging people for it. Like me, it's effortless, kind of like teaching for me, for you and a whole lot of fun. For you, it's a whole lot of fun. And if you can make money doing it, you make it your lifetime's work. Successful people believe this too, okay? That's why they put their core genius first. They focus just on it and they delegate everything else to their team. That's what I'm going to be talking about. And it's really good. Today, I'm going to be talking about delegation because delegation is huge for a lot of people, okay? Now... Compare that to other people in the world who go through life doing everything, even those tasks they're bad at, right? Have you ever done a task where you're like, you know what, I'm not really good at this, but I have to do it? Or that they, it could be done for more cheaper, uh, better, faster by someone else. They can't find the time to focus on their core genius because they failed to delegate even the most menial of tasks. When you delegate the grunt of work, okay... The things you hate doing or those tasks that are so painful you end up putting them off, you get to concentrate on what you love to do. You free up time so that you can be more productive and you can get a hell of a lot more joy in life. So why is delegating routine tasks and unwanted projects so difficult for most people? Most people are simply afraid to give up control, okay, or reluctant to spend money to pay for help. Deep down, most people simply don't want to let go. Others possibly, you know, have simply just fallen into the habit of doing everything themselves. It's too time consuming to explain it to someone. You say, right? Most people say that I can do it more quickly and better myself anyway. But can you? You see what I mean? A lot of it, you, you have to ask yourself this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you a story. Here in Thailand, the labor is pretty cheap, right? For a lot of different things. So you know what I do? I'm going to tell you right now. I have about six suits. I have probably about more than 15 trousers and more than 15 shirts. Can you imagine if I wash those every day or whatever weekly, bi-weekly, whatever it is, and I had to spend my entire evening or delegate an entire evening to iron that more than three hours? Does that make any sense? Absolutely not. You know, I used to do that back in uh, my first province in uh, Chanthaburi, Southeast Thailand, and that was not fun. And plus all my shirts ended up really, you know, wrinkled. You know, I never really used to go into the town and actually find a place that could actually wash my clothes and iron my clothes, my, you know, the, themselves. So then in the south of Thailand, there was a lady that lived right across uh, from where I lived. And I used to delegate, all, you know, delegate it and say, listen, OK, you can iron these clothes, have it done by this date. If I'm not happy with it or some, something ends up happening, I'm going to tell you if it happens a second time, like Jack Canfield says, I'm going to drop you. So there was one day 
sleep. And she did well, but there were a couple of times that I actually went there and I needed a particular shirt and that she wasn't there. She would go somewhere else. That's pretty much saying, hey, you know what? She